Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today I'm going to introduce you to my little friend. <laughs> Working hack number 743. Nobody likes the look of a screw head in their work. Let's hide it. First, take a chisel, come in from the end grain, and then very carefully pair in. Now we've got a little curl where we can hide the screw. Now you can drive your screw and hide it. Put some glue down and you never know it was there. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, Wood by Wright's not changing into one of those channels. This may be a hack video you have seen before, being able to hide a screw, and it actually works really well. You can hide a screw, glue it back down, and it just disappears, and it's, it's a really cool way of doing it. And we think of it kind of as a new thing, but in all honesty, it's actually been around for a long, long time. This has been something that people have done for hundreds of years. We tend to think that all old-time woodworkers were really high-skilled and quality, and everything they produced was amazing. The, the problem is the only things we still have to look at are the really high quality, long lasting things. And they didn't have a lot of those. But we do have a lot of documentation of people hiding heads in wood by peeling it up. The, the, the problem with it is if that weakens over time, you can't do anything to fix it. You have to destroy the surface to get at it and repair it. But it looks really good. It's very quick and easy and it actually it, it works if that's your thing. But there's a couple catches to doing that with the chisel. If I do it from the end grain like I showed, you can do it bevel up, and most monkeys can do that. That actually works out pretty easily. As long as you have a steady hand and you go straight in, you can get a nice curl. The problem comes if you want to do it in the middle of the board. In that case, if you do it bevel up, the curl then becomes deeper and deeper and deeper and you dive in, and it's really hard to get a curl long enough that you can actually get a screw head into it. So in that case, you have to flip it over and anytime you flip it over and go bevel down, now you need some more skill. Now I can dive in like normal, but I can control my depth and I can make this curl longer and longer, but it's gonna take more skill. Now I have a large enough space I can put that screw in. That's just a little bit harder to do and not everyone can do that nicely. And if you mess up, you've destroyed the surface of your work. Enter the Stanley number 96. Stanley made this little thing to answer that problem. And it's basically a plane without an iron. There's a mouth on there, there's a lever cap to attach it down, but there's no iron in the slot. It was designed for a quarter inch chisel. And with this, you can actually put it in, bevel up, because it is a very low angle plane. And I want to put it in so that the blade isn't sticking out yet, and I can tighten down this thumb screw. Then we can come in with a plane adjustment mallet, and tap it until the iron is just sticking out of the mouth. Then with this thing all set up, we can set the plane down, bed down, and put our fingers up here on the nose and on the tail and drive it forward very, very carefully. And you'll get this curl that comes out, then you back it out, and now you have a curl that you can drive in and cover up and hide. But here's the problem. This is actually a rather small head for a screw, but it's too big. That's a quarter inch chisel. So um, how is that supposed to work? We tend to think of screws as being the go-to fastener, but for a long time, they were all individually handmade and very, very expensive pieces of hardware. Then came along machines that can actually cut them, but they were still rather expensive. And they were an absolute pain to drive in because you had to drive them with a screwdriver or a bit and brace, and they were actually um, they were kind of painful to use. Instead, most of the time, people used nails. Anyone can swing a hammer and they go in really quickly. So I can come in here with a nail that easily fits inside that head size. Drive it down close to flush. Come in with a nail set, which you'd be pretty good at using naturally. Put it down below the surface. And now we can cover it back up, glue that in place, and make it disappear. The other conundrum that comes about is how do you glue it down? I could use a standard wood glue PVA or a super glue or an epoxy and that works great but the problem is you're always going to see that edge a little bit because they are not finished transparent and so you always have this little outline. So the best glue to use for it is actually a hide glue. It gives you a very finished transparent surface and actually allows you to smooth it out and make it really disappear. And Traditionally, this was the stuff you used for hundreds of thousands of years, and it actually works really good for this application. Now, the astute among you will realize that I've never actually used this 
hack in any video because it's really not a great way to do joinery. It's kind of akin to using pocket screws, but even pocket screws have a historical standard use that makes them very valuable in certain applications. This doesn't have that much other than just trying to make things a little bit cheaper, a little bit quicker, and a little bit easier and it doesn't provide that much structural strength. There are very few places where I would say, yes, this would be a great place to need it. Because with a pocket screw, you can always access the screw and readjust, fill the hole and reapply it. When you glue it in and cover it over, you're never gonna be able to get to that screw or nail again. It's stuck. And that means repairs on the project in the future are going to be astronomically difficult, if not impossible to do. And that, basically turns your furniture into Ikea. And that's why I'm telling everyone go out and buy a Stanley number 69 right now. Incredibly useful. You'll find uses for it all the time in the shop. So yes, even though Stanley made it, uh, yeah, it's not a great user tool. And there's a reason they're fairly collectible. A lot like the Stanley 193, which um, yeah, I might be doing a video on this sometime because the plane goes this way but the blades go that way. Hmm, that could be fun. It's actually been on my list for a while to make one of these, but for rather than using a quarter inch, being able to use a half inch chisel so you could do screw heads. And I thought that would be kind of a fun project that uh, the power tool user who likes to use that type of thing might enjoy. But yeah, do you need one of these? No. Um, should you go out and buy one of these? No. Unless you're a collector, then you need one of these because it's the Stanley 96, the smallest plane they made. <gasps> so cute. So not useful. But if you'd like to see me make one for a half inch, maybe I'll do that sometime in the future. So there you have it. The Stanley 96. <laughs> yes. Uh, the smallest plane Stanley ever made. It's even smaller than the number one, so it should be worth thousands of dollars. But no, it's not really a useful tool unless you're into that kind of thing and you like using finish nails to do your joinery. So in that case, go ahead and buy one. This particular one is actually to me on loan from a friend of the channel, so thank you for that. I'm going to be sending it back. I have wanted to buy one of these to make a video for a long time, but uh, I just haven't gotten myself up to buying one. Um, they are rather expensive for the lack of usability in them, so I hope you like it. If you do have any questions, thoughts, ideas, snide remarks, throw those down below. That does actually help out the channel. Anytime you throw a question down there or comment or just say hi, thank you. That helps us, as well as hitting the like, share, and subscribe. That helps us grow, gets us in front of more people, and a huge thank you for that. On top of that, you're going to find a bunch of names scrolling over there. The top of the list is Alex Adams. He is the man. They are all patrons on Patreon, and they are the ones literally keeping the lights on in the shop. So if you'd like to help out with that, then you can find links to Patreon down below, or you could become a member here on YouTube. We have special perks and some behind the scenes things for both patrons and members. You can find out about being a member by clicking the little join button down there, and I've got some information on that. So thank you. We are sponsored by you, the viewers, rather than by Stanley because I don't think I would ever want to sell one of those. So I hope you like that. And if you do, think about becoming a patron or a member. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. The Stanley number 69. <laughs> no, that's, that's a different plane. <laughs> yeah, no, the 96.